Welcome back. And for our last two um, slides that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at some examples that we see in calculus. And especially we're going to be dealing with negative exponents. So let's begin, though, before we begin with negative exponents, let's begin with an example that we're familiar with. Suppose I ask you to factor out an expression like this. Let's start with, suppose I ask you to factor this expression. Okay, what do we do? Okay, we look for the greatest common factor. Okay, between four and six, what's the greatest common factor? It's two, okay? X squared and X, what can we take out? This is x to the first, this is x. We have to take out the smallest power. So it's x to the first. And y cubed and y to the eighth, the only power that we can pull out of both terms is y cubed. So that is our least common, uh, our greatest common factor. Okay? Now, what is left? All right? If we've taken a 2 from a 4, we're left with 2. We factored an x, an x to the first from an x squared. So what is left, remember what we do, we subtract those exponents. And we've taken all of the y's away, so we're good there. For the second term, okay, remember we're factoring out 2x to the first y cubed. Factor 2 from 6 and we're left with 3 x to the first from x to the first. We've taken all of them away. We had y to the eighth, and we've taken away three of them. So we subtract the exponents, and so we get 2xy cubed times 2x minus 3y cubed. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, 3y to the I'm sorry, I've pulled out a cube, so it's 3y to the fifth that's left, okay? I took out a y cubed, so I subtracted, that's a 3, leaving me with a 3y to the fifth. Okay, now we're doing exactly the same thing when we're dealing with negative exponents, exactly the same process. So if you're confused, you know, you say, that looks kind of mysterious, just remember, you've done it before. We're just doing it with negative exponents. Okay, so let's see how it works here. All right, we'll begin with the one that's a little bit easier. We look for the greatest common factor that we can factor out. Two and three have nothing in common, so we're going to factor out an x. Now the question is, what power do we factor out? We factor out the smaller exponent minus 5 thirds, minus 2 thirds, the smaller exponent is minus 5 thirds. Remember in the negative direction, minus 5 thirds is smaller than minus 2 thirds. Okay, then what's going to be left? We're going to be left with a 2. We've already taken out x to the minus 5 thirds. Okay, minus 3 now we started with an x to the negative 2 thirds, and we're subtracting a negative 5 thirds. Now be careful that you're subtracting the negative. Okay? So be sure that you see that. It's minus a minus 5 thirds. Okay, so what do we end up with? x to the negative 5 thirds times 2 minus 3x to the negative 2 thirds plus 5 thirds. And that becomes x to the negative 5 thirds times 2 minus 3x to what power? Negative 2 plus 5, that's 3 thirds. So that's x to the negative 5 thirds over 2 minus 3x to the first. Okay, now 
that's technically done, but we would like to not have negative exponents in our answer. We know we don't like negative exponents. So let's rewrite that as 1 over x to the 5 thirds times 2 minus 3x, which is just 2 minus 3x over x to the 5 thirds. And notice that we have an excluded value, x can't be 0. Without the negative exponent being removed, you might not catch that, that 0 is in fact an excluded value. So we like to write our expressions without negative exponents. But do you see the process? We looked for the smallest power to factor out, which in the negative case would be negative 5 thirds, okay? And then we subtracted, just like we did with positive exponents. All right, let's look at one more example. Okay, what can we factor out? What is the greatest common factor? Well, it looks like one-third and one-half have nothing in common. x to the negative two-thirds and x to the one-third, we factor out the smallest power. That's x to the negative two-thirds. And then we have x to the one-half and x to the negative one-half. We take out the smallest power. Okay, so that's what we factored out. Now what's going to be left in each term? Okay, in the first term I still have my fraction one-third. I have removed x to the negative two-thirds, but I have x plus one. What power is left? I started with one-half and I factored out a negative one-half. I subtract that exponent. Okay. In the second term, I have one half. I started out with x to the one third, and I factor out x to the negative two thirds. Again, I subtract my exponents. x plus one to the negative one half is gone. That's factored out completely. Okay? Again, do you see that process? Smallest exponent, and then you subtract. All right, what does that leave us with? x to the negative 2 thirds, x plus 1 to the negative 1 half, and we have 1 third times x plus 1 to the 1 half plus 1 half. Now it is not an accident that we're having these fractions that reduce nicely. That's because of the calculus behind these expressions. So we expect these things to happen. So for example, here we're going to have 1 third plus 2 thirds. And they will both reduce very nicely. So it'll be x to the negative 2 thirds x plus 1 to the negative 1 half, and we're going to have 1 third times x plus 1 to the first, plus 1 half times x to the 1 third plus 2 thirds is 3 thirds. Okay, so it's also to the first power. Okay, now let's keep going. Remember, we want to remove the negative exponents. So I'm going to write that as 1 over x to the 2 thirds times 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 half. And then notice that I can write that single fraction as x plus 1 over 3 plus x over 2. Again, those powers are just 1, so we can drop those. All right, and then we can multiply through each term by that denominator. So what I will get is x plus 1 over 3 times x to the 2 thirds times x plus 1 to the 1 half plus x over 2 times x to the 2 thirds 
times x plus 1 to the 1 half. And that is the expression that we get. And we can leave it looking like that. And there we go. If we want, we can also write this as a single fraction. So that's one option. We could write that as a single fraction as well. If we did that, our least common denominator, notice it would be 6 times x to the 2 thirds times x plus 1 to the 1 half. And if I do that, the first fraction has to be multiplied by 2 and the second by 3. And so I can write that as 2 times x plus 1 plus just 3x. And if I multiply that out and combine, I'll do that in one step. You can see that, I think. It will be 5x plus 2 over 6x to the 2 thirds times x plus 1 to the 1 half. And that is our final result. We have one last example to show you. And that is something that we're going to be calling a difference quotient. Okay? And a difference quotient, you will see as we move on, it's just going to be the difference of terms. It's going to look like this. You'll see, recognize that H in the bottom. And this time, all we want to do is rationalize the numerator. Okay? Remember how we rationalize the numerator or denominator? We use the special product a minus b times a plus b equals a squared minus b squared, and we multiply by the conjugate, okay? So in this case, our a is the square root of 4 plus h, and our b is 2. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate, which does not change the sign in the radical, or the 2, but it changes the sign between. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. And so the conjugate we just saw is the square root of 4 plus h plus 2. Okay, don't forget to multiply top and bottom by that conjugate. And so we're going to have the square root of 4 plus h minus 2 times the square root of 4 plus h plus 2. And your denominator will now be h times the square root of 4 plus h plus 2. Remember, we're rationalizing the numerator here. And there are going to be very good reasons for doing this, again, when you get to calculus. Now, what does the special product tell us? We get the first term squared minus the second term squared. OK. Square a square root, and you're left with 4 plus h minus 4 all over h times our expression. Okay, remember we saw earlier the square root of a times the square root of a, which is the square root of a, the quantity squared, just equals a. So that's what we're doing. That's how we're eliminating the radical here. And that's the whole point of rationalizing, so that we can write it without a fraction, in this case, in the numerator. OK, and now we see that we have a cancellation. And with these difference quotients, you're going to expect that. And we'll do some more along the way. And you'll see that that's going to be happening. And so I'm just going to be left with 1 in the numerator. And this will be my denominator. And remember, I have the excluded value, 
that h can't be 0 because I've eliminated that value. Okay, that gives us some good examples of rational expressions and fractional, fractional expressions and negative exponents, all things that will be very important as you move forward. So please make sure you understand this lecture very well. Thank you for your attention.